Hi, I'm Anne and welcome back to my channel. A couple weeks ago, I did a book that talked about my new bookish resolutions for 2021. And one of those resolutions was for every book I buy, I get rid of a book. So that's going to start now. Uh, so today I'm going to be doing a book haul and a book on haul. <laughs> I have 20 books that I either bought or received as gifts and 20 books that I am getting rid of. I am dividing the haul into books I purchased myself and then books as I received as a gift. And then I am going to go into the unhaul section. Also, I won't be really talking about many of these books. If I have like something really pertinent to say, if I have a lot of information about it, then I'll talk about it. But most of the time, I will not be talking like in depth about any of these books. So first one is uh, Chinese, China, A History by um, Cheryl Bardot from the Field Museum. This is kind of a basic book. Uh, it has some pretty pictures of the history of China. But basically, I just tend to collect books about the history of China. I got this off of Book Outlet. So yeah, the next actually few of these will be from Book Outlet. The next one again is The Souls of China, The Return of Religion After Mao by Ian Johnson. This book documents um, how religion was kind of thrown out of China during Mao's regime and then how it slowly found its way back in the years following his death. So looks really interesting. Next book again is another one. Uh, this is 32nd Ancient China. The 50 most important achievements of a timeless civilization each explained in half a minute. And the editor is Yi Jie Zhuang. My, my Chinese is not the best. I'm, I'm a second year Chinese student, okay? And I still suck at Chinese. Um, but so this is an interesting idea to me of like having this like single page just like be a minute worth of reading but you learn a lot about some interesting aspect of Chinese history. I'm very excited to read this out as well. You, you'll notice the theme I do tend to buy a lot of books about China because not only is my I guess focus in my history degree on Asian history in particular, but I particularly like Chinese and Korean history. Uh, the next book was a book I, I kind of got on impulse. It's called um, Lost Science, Astonishing Tales of Forgotten Genius uh, by Kitty Ferguson. One example is Flemish Jewish astronomer Ferdinand Verbiest who invented the first automobile as a clever toy to amuse the Chinese emperor in 17th century Beijing. So it's like interesting science stuff that are kind of forgotten. The next one is The Last Neanderthal by Claire Cameron. And this is a fictional tale of a Neanderthal family in like way BC area. And yeah, it says 40,000 years in the past, it follows this young girl that has to raise this orphan boy or just this little kid in her own. But apparently it is very highly historically accurate, if you can call it that, because obviously we don't know that much about the lives of these people back in like prehistoric time. Now the next two books I read, the first book of the series, Mountain Dra uh, Jade Dragon Mountain by Elsa Hart at, I don't know, the mid year of 2020. So yeah, maybe August or something like that. I don't remember. But I love this book. It is set in 17th century China. And it's kind of told during a time or 18th century. Oh, yeah, 18th century China, this individual book is set on the border between China and Tibet. And it is kind of a murder mystery, but it is so lush with historical detail. I absolutely loved it. So I bought this book and my boyfriend ended up getting the second book for me for our anniversary because he knew that I loved the book and I couldn't find the other two in the series from the library. So he bought me the second one and they had the third one on book outlet. So City of Ink by Elsa Hart is the third book. And now I have all three of the books that are actually out in the series. I'm not sure if she's working on another one, but I really hope so because I would definitely buy it. In the theme of China, because so many of these books are about China, I got The Dream of the Red Chamber by Cao 
Suichin. Uh, I actually got this exact copy from the library when I originally read this book. It's known as one of the great classic classics of China. It was written during the Qing Dynasty, I believe, about the this young man, kind of, but it's more like a generational story of just an examination of a family living in Beijing during this time. And it is exceptionally written. And yeah, I love this book. So the next one is Take, Burn and Destroy by S. Thomas Russell. It's pretty much an epic naval adventure story. It looks really fun and interesting. And since I've read Treasure Island, I've just been a little bit in the mood for reading more adventure stories. I don't know why I want to read Kidnapped. And yeah, this looked interesting. So I got that. Mm. The next book again, I got for fun. And that is Ultimately Demise, a darkly humorous presentation of 365 deadly deeds by William Dylan Powell. Killed with a toilet, deadly belt buckles, sexed to death, ultimately demised, is a daily exploration of the most fascinating ways people have offed one another since the beginning of time. I'm gonna say I'm going to love this. The next book I kind of got more for my boyfriend than for me because it's called Style and Man by Alan Flusser. And it pretty much talks about how to get custom made clothes for men. I wanna learn how to work with stylizing and sewing men's clothes. If you didn't know, I've been sewing since I was seven. So I sew a, not only a lot of my own clothes, but I sew like all the costumes I wear to like the Renaissance Festival and things like that. The last one again was more for fun and it's Mythic Creatures 30 Postcards. Uh, dragons, unicorns, mermaids, and more. And again, this was, this is more like historical drawings but it has like the front that has very pretty drawings on it. I will probably never use any of these postcards, but this book was super interesting. The next two are entirely Chinese books. So I got a collection of Dofu collected poems. So Dofu was this guy that lived in the Tang Dynasty. He was a poet. I have read quite a few of his poems with English translation, but now that I am learning Chinese slightly, I want to read more poetry and it's nice because it has not only the Chinese characters but it has the English on the other side so I can like understand it so I'm not quite good enough to read this but the more I practice Chinese the more I want to challenge myself and read this and I also got the selected poems from the Tang Dynasty so very similar to the previous one and the last one is partially in Chinese that is the travels of Marco Polo and not only have I wanted to read this in English, and they do have entirely in English for most of the book, but it has a um, beginning section that is entirely in Chinese. I don't know if you can see that. <clears throat> and the last book I got is North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. I love this book and I have read it, I think at least two times, maybe three. Um, but I've always read it. I have it in the ebook version, but it was a free ebook on Kindle and it's not the best version. There's a lot of typos in it. Uh, and then I got it from the library. Now we get to the books that I didn't purchase for myself. I got it as a gift. Most of these were for Christmas. So the first one is Murder with Peacocks, a uh, Meg Laszlo mystery by Donna Andrews. I got this from my boyfriend's mom and I have never heard of this series, but it looks really cute and I want to enjoy and digest more cozy mysteries because they're very light. They're very easy to work through. Like they, they don't, they aren't quite as serious as a lot of the books that I read because I read a lot of like historical books that are really serious. So yeah, I'm really excited. The next one is Next Year in Havana by Chanel Clayton. So this book is set partially in Havana, Cuba in the 50s and partially in the like 2017 in the modern day. And it's it seems to follow this romance between in the 50s this romance between this young woman and this revolutionary and she's more of like a socialite in Havana and he's obviously a revolutionary and um then it follows this the granddaughter I believe of the woman from the 50s in the modern day as she like tracks her the stories of her grandmother it sounds really interesting especially since I read a lot of historical novels that are like this but 
I have never run read one that is set in Havana. So I'm really excited to read a book about Cuba. The next one is A Woman of No Importance, The Untold Story of the American Spy Who Helped Win World War II by Sonia Purnell. So this is a book that follows, it's nonfiction and it looks really good because the first thing I look at to see is if it has endnotes, and it does, which is awesome sign for nonfiction his history. Virginia Hall is the woman that it follows, by the way, but I don't know anything about her in real life, so I'm excited to read it. And the next one my boyfriend got me when we were at the Goodwill, and yeah, the story he tells about how he snuck this past me when I was literally shopping with him is very interesting. Anyway, um, but that is the dark, His Dark Materials by Phil Pullman. This is the entire series or trilogy um, that starts with The Golden Compass and then The Subtle Knife and The Amber Spyglass. I read this series a decade ago at least. It's been a long time and I've been wanting to reread the series because not only have my tastes for books changed a lot, but my understanding of just the world and fantasy and everything has really adapted. So I am really excited to reread this series, but it's also, yeah, it's a, it's a whopper. Now the last one is possibly my favorite book I received. My mom bought this for me and mm, so I read this book a couple years ago and it's, bought, it's called The Explorer's Guild by John Bard and Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner, the the actor, a lot of people know him as acting. A lot of people don't know that he actually co-wrote a book, which is awesome. But this book is one, it's a it's a beautiful book. Um, I will sh take off the dust cover and just show you how pretty it looks. It's got that beautiful cover and then it's got these beautiful maps on the inside. And so basically this book, it's almost a thousand pages. No, only about 750, so not quite as long. It is half graphic novel, so you can look at certain pages and it's pure graphic. Half, half like actual book. Here, I'll show you like like they have some pages like this, but pretty much the story follows the Explorers Guild, which is the secret guild that exists around the world. And uh, their whole point is go to go on adventures, which I love that idea. But this specific story is about this group that is trying to find uh, Shambhala. Sh Shambhala? Why can I pro not pronounce that word right now? Shambhala. Sh Shambhala. Anyway, there was also this like famous guy that was an explorer that went missing and his brother and their whole group is going to find it. It's hilarious. This book is a lot of fun. If you've read Tintin and enjoy it, you you would enjoy this. This is like a slightly more adult version of Tintin. Uh, it is such a unique book. I have never picked up a book that is quite like this. Not only is it very unique for being like half prose, half comic, or half graphic novel, but it's also got this such unique characters and unique world, the way it is created and it's woven into one concise story is just incredible. I wish more people know about this book. I did like a review for this over on my blog a, few, a couple years ago when I read this and I actually had what at least claimed to be John Bard, the author, who co-wrote it, actually commented on my blog and said, thank you for bringing attention to this book type thing because it's kind of unknown. Okay, now we are going to the books that I am going to unhaul. And I always feel bad about unhauling books because I wanna have a massive library in my mind, but I also realize I want to live small and more frugal and not have a massive house that's nothing but books. So the first book I got is the only book out of these that I have not read. And that is um, the Universal History of Music. <laughs> so this is entirely in French. Um, I went through a phase where I really wanted to learn French and yeah, but this is like the history of music, but in French. And I kept this book for years. I've had this book for three or four years. Uh, and here's the problem. I have so many other languages I want to learn. I'm focusing obviously now on Chinese, but I also want to learn Korean and I want to learn Russian. So those are the three languages I kind of want to focus on. And French, unfortunately, is not in that bag of languages I want to prioritize. Even though in theory, I want to like speak eight languages and I want to learn like so many languages, but it's just not feasible. 
My next one, I don't know if the dust cover, but it is Killing Jesus by Bill O'Reilly and Martin, Martin Dugard. I really like this series of like killing people. Killing the Rising Sun is my favorite of the series so far, which is pretty much killing Japan or how the US defeated Japan during World War II, which is a great book. I highly recommend it, but I didn't like this one. I like the ones because the problem is you don't have that much factual data about Jesus. It felt like very fictionalized and yeah if you have a lot of documentation uh like with killing lincoln is another book in the series you have a lot lot of documentation and letters both from him and his wife and people around them kept diaries so you have a lot of information with jesus you don't have that so it felt a lot more fictionalized and i just didn't like that as much. The next book I read, I actually read was um, Homecoming by, again, I'm not gonna try to pronounce her name because yeah, but it follows these two women who uh, one, they're both from Ghana, Africa, they're sisters, they never knew each other and they get separated. One becomes a slave in America, one stays in Ghana. And yes, it follows their success of generations. I did a more full review on the video. I did the challenge, um, 2000 pages in 10 hours. And I ended up just thinking I couldn't connect to any of the characters because we would only spend one chapter in each character's perspective and then go to the successive generation. And yeah, the characters were the reason I didn't really like it. Even though I love the historical context, I just don't see myself ever reading it again. Okay, sorry about that. My battery just died and I had to go change it. Okay, so <clears throat> the next book is Vicky Finds the Answer by Helen Wells. This is a series that I would compare it similarly to Nancy Drew. It's got that very similar type of like, she has a problem to solve, a mystery to solve, and she is a stewardess on an airline. It was a big series in like 40s or something. Um, I didn't like this book. I was bored by it. I didn't find it that interesting. Um, maybe it's just because like I have more nostalgic feelings for Nancy Drew that I like that one better, but the mystery wasn't that interesting. And yeah, this is like a really old copy, which is why I've kept it this long, but I just don't think I'll ever read it. Uh, the next one is Frozen Girl, The Discovery of an In Incan Mummy by David Getz. Um, this book, I won't get too into it because there were like a few bizarre things that were in this book that I really didn't like that they talked about, especially since this is more of like a kid's book that a kid should read and I really didn't like it. I won't get into like any details, but uh, I bought this from Book Outlet a year or so ago and yeah, I just never want to read it again. It either repeated information I knew or, you know, I didn't necessarily agree with how they presented information. The next, next book is a Catholic book. If you didn't know, I'm Catholic. So uh, Mother Angelica's Little Book of Life Lessons and Everyday Spirituality, um, edited by Raymond Arroyo. So Mother Angelica was like this big TV personality. She helped to create EWTN. So this is kind of like a collection of her quotes that she was known to say. And um, what well, was fun to read and I enjoyed it. I don't see myself ever reading it again and I didn't enjoy it enough to like really want to recommend it to anybody. It was like fun and cute, um, but eh, not that good. Uh, the next one was a book that I got for school and that is The Things They Carry by Tim O'Brien. This is a nonfiction story about uh, O'Brien's Vietnam experiences. He fought in Vietnam and it is it is an interesting book because I don't know that much about Vietnam and I love seeing the perspective of a soldier. I just did not write his like his writing style. He jumps around a lot. He has like really weird prose and he also has a, a lot of crude language, a lot of, and I, I'm just like, I like more cozy things. I don't like as much crude language, just my personal taste. So yeah, I didn't really like the writing style even though the content was really interesting at times. Next one is Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead by Stom Thomas, by Tom Stockard. The uh, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern were two characters in Hamlet, which is one of my favorite Shakespeare plays. So I got this like short play um, that is about them. I heard it was like a comedy. It's really fun. And so I bought it and I did not like this book at all. Uh, it's a really short play, but it's pretty much entirely about Rosencrantz and Guildenstern having these weird conversations about very random things, but it's set around the time of the beginning of Hamlet. 
and I don't know it's it's just a bizarre read um for anyone who has read this and enjoy this I really want to know like if I missed something because it's such a bizarre read and I don't see myself ever picking it up again the next one is actually a series and that is um Mr. Churchill's Secretary by Susan Elia McNeil I own the first three books I don't know if you can see that but um I got the series from the Goodwill a few years ago and I love historical mysteries so I thought I would really enjoy it but I didn't enjoy the series all that much um there's a lot more books in the series I just read the first three I just didn't really like the main character I just didn't like it enough to one want to keep it and two to continue on in the series so yeah I'm getting rid of it I did give the book a second chance because I heard a lot of people loved this series and I didn't want to just read the first book and be like ah eh, okay then I, I give up I wanted to give it another shot so I read three books and I still didn't enjoy it so yeah we're getting rid of that the next one in the same vein as the last one is the Maggie Dobbs series by um, Jacqueline Winspear again I may go back and read this series but I can easily get it from the library I read this first book I think I gave it like two three stars it was average to me but it wasn't enough for me to really love it and want to continue on in the series the next one is Balzac and the Little Chinese Seamstress by Dai Sijia this is a fictional story that follows two young men who are sent to the country to be re-educated in Mao's regime which they would send like wealthy educated boys out to the country to be indoctrinated into commun communist agenda that's the best way I can say but they both fall in love with this Chinese seamstress and this is one of the few books I tend to love books about China and things like that but this was one of the few books that was kind of very average to me the boys find some books which were not allowed in Mao's regime and Balzac was one of the authors that they read about I did not like the two male characters and the one female character the little Chinese se seamstress she was kind of very vaguely developed I I just didn't feel like I got to know her character at all she was kind of like this perfect attractive girl to these two guys and I never felt like we learned about her next book is Life of Pi by Yan Martel uh, this is a book that follows this young Indian boy who is uh, without giving away spoilers I feel like I'm gonna give away spoilers he's in this boat crash and he gets on a raft and there's this tiger and few other wild animals and so he has to survive out there no spoilers but this book is pretty boring for me it's very flowery language and it's all about like the visual language but to me in a book that doesn't really come across as that cool and I didn't care for the story the twist at the end is amazing but a twist does not make a good book next book is White Fang by Jack London I just read this also for my 2000 pages in 10 hours and I like this but I liked Call of the Wild better and this didn't give me anything that Call of the Wild didn't and I preferred that one better so I don't see myself ever reading this again so I'm getting rid of this next book is Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card I feel like this is a unpopular opinion to have but uh this book follows this young boy in like the futuristic world and they're being attacked by aliens uh, spoilers and uh he has to be trained to in the simulation to learn how to destroy it but this is kind of a glorified training montage this entire book like, if you don't like massive training montages all the time you won't like this book and I happen not to enjoy it I like the world I liked you know the twist at the end but for the most part I don't see myself ever reading it again or continuing on in the story I may read more of cards works but not this story next one is Eclipse of the Body by Christopher West this is another Catholic theology book it talks about Pope John Paul's theology of the body which was I won't get into it Catholic stuff but this was interesting it kind of like sums up some of the theology in theology of the body but it wasn't enough for me to say this is a brilliant book I want to read it again uh, the next one is another series uh, another cozy series and that is knit one kill two by Maggie Shefton and the um second one is needled to death and I bought these two books and again like I read the first one and I didn't like the main character and if I don't like the main character in a cozy mystery series I will not like the cozy mystery series like cozy mysteries are like very digestible and quick to read and fun but if you don't like the main character 
you won't really enjoy the mystery because the mystery is all about them solving the case. And I didn't like the main character. So I even gave the series a second chance because obviously I bought the first two books at the Goodwill and I ended up reading the second one too. And I didn't like either of them enough to read them again. So we're getting rid of them. And the final book, oh, I can't believe we're done with this. This video is going to be so long. I'm so sorry. The final book is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I feel a little bit bad, but not that bad for disliking this book. This is a really stylized book and I, I feel like people either love it or hate it. I was more in the like middle towards hate realm. Um, the writing style is really amazing and the way du, Maur du Maurier creates atmosphere is just incredible. But this book just, I did not like it. I didn't like the main character. I really hated the main character, which I get like she's supposed to be just this kind of blank slate type thing, this innocent girl. Besides the atmosphere, there wasn't enough for me to say, yeah, I want to read this again. But I do want to still read more of Demurier's books. Another reason I should stop buying books is because doing these book hauls are truly exhausting. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe, um, click the bell notification to be notified when I post. I post every Saturday at 6 p.m. And yes, uh, oh, like this video if you enjoyed it. And also comment to let me know just general thoughts, anything about this video or anything, you know, you want me to do any ideas for future videos you want me to try. Just let me know your thoughts down in the comments and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.